we have constructed few functions or matrices. Now you might wonder why we took an exponential and a logarithm as a functional matrix. The reason why we have to look at exponentials is that when we have to solve linear differential equations in physics and other subjects like in dynamics and engineering, the solutions are exponentials. And if we are working on a space, like a vector space or a space of functions, Hilbert space, for example, then uh, solutions are exponentials of matrices. That's why we had to do this. And in particular, quantum mechanics, in a way that it was formulated by Schrodinger and by Heisenberg, satisfies linear differential equations, especially in Schrodinger formulation of it. So let's have a look at linear differential equations in a slightly different angle than you usually think of them, just to set them up for our products of matrices. Here is the simplest example of a linear differential equation. Take one scalar variable, so one function depending on time, let's say if you are taking derivatives with respect to time, and a linear relation means that a derivative of time is proportional to the position or the value of this field at time t. And the proportionality constant is some rate like an interest rate or decay rate or inverse lifetime or whatever. Now, if you know anything about differential equations, you know that the solution of differential equations is written in terms of exponentials. In particular, if at time t equals zero, you're at position at value which you call x0, then the solution just multiplies this by this exponential, and that's the value of x at time t, which you easily check by taking first derivative, you bring lambda there, and this product means that you evaluate this at time t. Now let's do it slightly awkwardly, as though we didn't know what differential equations are, and do it, you know, how people originally derived them, Newton, Leibniz. Look at the infinitesimal time difference. So difference between starting point and point delta time till later. The derivative is defined as this ratio of how far I've gone in time t divided by time delta t in the limit of infinitesimal delta t. And that's a discretized version or finite difference version of a linear differential equation. Xt delta t is, I just multiply this by and add a constant. So I'm just writing this equation. Uh, this being linear means that x uh, delta t time later is the initial x at time zero multiply by this small difference from one because lambda divided by large integer n is some small number and you know and this is a constant t divided by n of course so if i step n times i will advance the time t because the little whole finite time t is divided in n small steps I look at this and I realize, well, but that's definition of exponential. So we have derived the exponential solution using finite differences. Now, the reason why I'm doing this slightly awkward thing is because when we do the same thing 
for d-dimensional linear ODEs. Then a d-dimensional linear ODE is a vector in d-dimensional space of reals. So a vector with d components, let's say three components in our three-dimensional space. Uh, and the differential equation now has different rate uh, for every particular initial, you know, investment stock, whatever this vector is. So that's a matrix. It takes initial thing and tells me what the rates are in infinitesimal time. Let's assume for now that this is a constant matrix. This is what X is at time T. It's a D values of the thing. And we have initial condition that at initial time, it's some given starting capital or whatever we have uh, distribution of the stocks. I take the time derivative just like I did before, but now it's a vector difference. So this is in d-dimensional space. So it's a little difference vector dividing delta tau. And uh, that's discretization of this equation. I multiply everything by delta tau. I put it on the right-hand side like I did before. Remember? I wrote this equation as increment of x. And then I linearize it. And then I repeated it n times. And this particular matrix will be happening so often, especially in when you're solving classical differential equations, linear ones, I'll give it name j at time t. And this is the matrix uh, that says after time t, original position gets mapped into new position. And as it's a linear problem, that's mapped by some particular matrix. And what is this matrix? We look at it, and that's definition of matrix exponential. So it says that the solution is original point starting here in the dimension. For every little step, it's advanced along a trajectory. And at time t, I obtain my answer by multiplying by matrix, and I get the value at time t. So this solves a linear differential equation. And for example, solves quantum mechanics, except uh, that remark you might not find very helpful. But hang on. You will find it extremely helpful very soon. Next, what happens if we have variable interest rates? So as the year goes, you know, the interest changes. So I have to compound it by some table that says, what is the interest on a given day of the year? 